you feel dead because you won't eat. You feel dead in life. You feel depressed. You feel defeated. You feel weak. You feel fatigued. You feel like you won't overcome because you're dead. You're spiritually dead. You won't pick up and eat the word of God. You won't feed and feast. You have physical food, but you don't have your spiritual food. You have physical liquid, but you won't drink your spiritual liquid. The Holy Spirit represents water, also oil. Five foolish, five wise. Keep your lamps filled with oil. The Holy Ghost. Stay in God. It's really simple, but the devil blocks us. The Bible says to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. <sighs> with the Word of God. So, that means that what happens when somebody is so weak that they can't feed themselves? You have someone to assist to put the spoon up to their mouth. So find brothers and sisters who are willing to put the spoon and the word of God up to your mouth, a.k.a. Bible study. I'm just getting on here hearing what the Lord is saying. This, these are instructions. This page isn't for, oh, who she thinks she is, this and that. This is whoever feels destitute and you're trying to figure out how to get to the next level or trying to figure out why you're the way that you are. Or you know how you are, but you're trying to figure out how to get out. This is the page for you. But also, the Bible says faith without works are dead. So I'm not just trying to tell you about my relationship with God and all the oohs and ahs, right? I like to keep it cutthroat. So this is what we're doing. Faith without works is dead. So now that you realize the issue, work on it. Change, apply. Get rid of your attitude, anger, work on it. Pray and ask God that you don't want it. You know, you don't like the way that you, you are, how you treat people, but you got to tell God how you feel. You have to tell God how you feel. Be honest. Repent. Tell God how you feel. Get into Bible study. We have men and women of God, teens, children, and we're reading the Word of God. We, we even have people who call just to listen and partner with the prayer. No one should be disrespectful. It shouldn't be uh, religious, and it shouldn't be forceful, uh, the things of God. Sorry for going to sneeze again. Just get in somewhere. If you know you got an attitude issue, whatever, just work it out. Ask God to change you. Ask for prayer. Ask for prayer. Do what you got to do. But don't just sit there and do nothing. You got a world that's collapsing and falling on you. That's like somebody warning of you, warning you of a real building get ready to collapse. You're just going to sit in there and let the, the building collapse on you? Are you for real? You got a, a spouse or whatever who's cheating and you know they're cheating with somebody with HIV. You hear about it before they come sleep back with you. You just going to let the person come sleep back with you? I understand that there are a lot of people around here with just a lot of things going on. But are you going to be a one to just not listen? When you got warning. And for the ones who are going through, who could be HIV positive or something? Who could be HIV positive or something? This is no condemnation or gossip. I, I don't see anyone with HIV or STD any different than the other. I don't. Cry out to God and, and believe God for healing. The Bible says food is medicine. And also, we're supposed to be calling for the elders of the church and uh, the leaders of the church. And we're supposed to pray for people. And then if they, and the, the Bible says if they have any sin, then their sins are forgiven. But you don't have people calling and, and uh, confessing and someone praying. Also, the Bible says to confess thy sins to one another. You can't even confess your sin to somebody because somebody ready to gossip and tell your business. And then when you, you they expose, they get exposed through you or God exposes them, they get angry. Then they turn their back on God. Well, God, I thought you hated that person too. Well, I don't, I don't know if I want to have anything to do with God then. I'm telling you, God is not who you think he is. You don't know the God that you serve. And God is no respect of persons. But one thing he ain't going to do is partner with you in your gossip and your mess. He's not going to do it. So, um, think about that. Ponder on that. Feed your spirit, man. Why are you weak? Because you won't read the word of God. People are teaching it to you wrong. There's going to be a lot of people that come after me. Don't listen to Quinesia. Don't listen to her. This is this and that. She's been through a lot. This is this and that. Or, you know, stuff she went through. All these established churches, they feel like they got power over you. But I tell you one thing. I love it when somebody's humble. You can have a church for 20, 30, 50 years and you still understand that people are new babes of being raised up just like you. And you got the respect to move out the way and be quiet and sit down. I'm going to just keep it real. God ain't looking for nobody to get in the way. You got new people coming in every day. Children, just because you didn't grow up and teach a child and have a parent that you grew their child up 
that ain't the only person you're supposed to respect. You're supposed to respect women and men of God who are growing and coming in Christ. You're going to have some people who their anointing seem way smoother. Someone uh, is more drawn and attracted to them than you. But why is that? Do you have flesh in your ministry and that person gives into God more? Don't get angry. King Saul was jealous. He was jealous. But that was his heart. Cain and Abel. There was an offering God liked. And that was an offering that God didn't like. And the other brother felt like he had to kill the other brother. Check your own heart. Quit blaming God and quit blaming other people. If you was born with dominion, you got the authority to go outside, pick your own house, pick your own job. But don't blame yourself to kill yourself. Get yourself right and confess. Get yourself together. Some, some things don't have to be long. Just think and ponder. If you don't know what to do next, please reach out. Text me, 512-318-7897. Uh, there are some people that um, are looking at the videos. We're, we're busy. We're praying and all that stuff like that. But I, I've been checking my uh, emails. My emails at the top of my page. But text me on my phone. And uh, people who want to come in. Also, we have people still looking on the page and recruiting. Um, listen to the people. They're going to talk and connect you to me. Um, I need your phone number so I can put you inside the group. Me, group chat. We pray. We have a men's prayer line and a women's. And... Um, I'm creating one for the teens and the children. You know, we haven't had anyone yet. But I will create that uh, phone line tonight. And uh, we have a, a huge line. Co-ed that we pray. And we have the teen, the teen chat rooms open and ready to go. And we have children's channel we get ready to create. And we have gospel rap. So you guys, um, be blessed. Please don't be afraid. If some people have asked to get in contact. I haven't heard from you guys. Please text me. Please text me. Please text me. Please do not delay. Don't let the devil talk to your mind. Don't let the devil talk to your mind. Please reach out. Reach out. Reach out. Be blessed.